from C-Town. We're doing our awesome little review of what is the sequel to What If, which came out last year by Red Tide Pictures. Uh, Wiley Watson was the director, mainly the cinematographer, the big minds behind this whole uh, shenanigans of a film. He did an awesome job. Uh, the review here, let's see, what do we want to talk about? Oh, an epic cast of off-road riders in some crazy progressive trail, you know, areas that were all over the place. This was a great movie. It didn't have, like, the amplitude that you would normally think of when you're kind of going out getting ready to ride, like you might listen to some heavy metal or some kind of, like, crazy alternative music. When I listen to you to amp up, I wouldn't say that this had a lot of that. It was very theatrical. The, cinema, the cinematography was very, very good. They did a very amazing job of bringing in a lot of new types of cinematography into a moto film. I, and I'm not dogging it by any means. It's just that this doesn't have the amplitude that you would typically look for maybe before you go out and ride. This has, you know, it really kind of talks to the riders and really sees how much they appreciate the scene, how much the scene's given them, how much they like to give back. And it's very, in a weird way, heartfelt. It's cool to see these guys talking about that and then showing it with their actions and writing it. This is a movie that you can get on iTunes and Google Play if you're in the mood to download it legally and pay for it, which I think you should do. Or if you'd actually like to have the archaic hard copy, you can buy it online. Uh, Red Tide Pictures' website and Verb Off Road, things like that, is where you can get it. So let's go ahead and delve into some of the sections and tell you what we thought. Thanks for watching, kids! So move on to Taylor Roberts section. Now this was done in Mexico on the beach, right there on the coast. Edge of the world kind of stuff. Looked super, super sick. They did a neat little thing with the intro. They tried to have fun with it where they kind of brought him in, you know, in an interesting fashion. He's waking up on the beach, oh, stretching. He's got his two extra empty beers. Now, I'm sorry. If you're in Mexico and you're going riding, you're not just going to have two beers. That's not the reason you sleep on a back porch. There would be tons of other people around, but it was clever. I liked it, and I'm like, glad to see other people having fun. Now, the terrain that he was riding on, super sick. Dude, that sand track that he had, it looked absolutely epic. Now, they did talk about, you know, oh, I could ride wherever I want because I don't have to worry about the police. Well, what about the cartels? This is Mexico. We have absolutely no idea where they were, so surely you might have to have the police telling you what to do, but you might have somebody chasing you to try to chop your head off. I'm not too sure. I was kind of disappointed to see that they didn't show a lot of Taylor Roberts' other aspects, that the fact that he can ride great on Enduro Cross and a lot of other works type terrain and things like that. I wish, even though it was off-road, it was Mexico, it was sand beaches and stuff, I just kind of wish they'd have thrown in some other aspects of that. It would have been really, really nice to see. Kind of moving forward, go to the to the, Quote, uh, the the Quinn Cody and Kendall Norman episode. So they're in this little mountains of Santa Barbara. It was... Uh, just absolutely mecha terrain so so progressively sick just there's nothing really out there they're just riding off of Quinn Quinn's dad's property that he got back when he was a hippy dippy you know artist or whatever doing things that the government probably didn't like too much but Kendall Norman is a manimal like he those two guys are both known for kind of their Baja style of riding they're both big known desert racers well apparently they have a lot more ability than what it's just led up to now i don't think anybody didn't think that but i was glad to see that they showed different aspects of them riding it was really cool so those guys are awesome kendall norman of absolutely uh awesome props to him for doing romaniacs this year he did it on a ktm just to say so we'll see how it keeps going we'll talk about some more sections so the stuff that we had with cody webb and kyle redmond you want to talk about some crazy ass dudes? These guys are awesome. Cody Webb is a trial, is a national trials champion. He's uh, competed with Pat Smaje quite a few years in the national trial stuff, and he's also been doing enduro cross lately on the big bikes. So his skill set is just coming off the charts. He is really starting to learn how to ride those big bikes. And then we got Kyle Redman, who is always kind of the guinea pig kind of guy. Like, sure, if you want to try it on your motorcycle, or at least like you know dare him to do it, he's gonna try it. So. Those two guys together, they've kind of grown up and had a lot of fun together. This section was really great to see. Um, it just the, the terrain that they found. They found this for these kind of trials type stuff where these guys are just splatting all up on the rocks and everything. Super, super neat section. Uh, I, I, they were doing things in motorcycles that you just don't think can be done. I mean, sure, you've seen like, you know, one or two people. But, I mean, it was just, I, I would love to learn how to maybe be able to do that. I don't think I could, but why not, right? Apparently, there's like a cabin up there where they could just stay around. I've... That would be one hell of a weekend. I have a, I can only imagine. Now, if you were to move a little bit back to the East Coast, you would run into a guy in the woods by the name of Brad Bakken. 
I think it's from West Virginia or some other place where probably pig suey means way too much to too many uh, people and they get awkward about it. But they had, they had a fun little intro where they just kind of like come in there and he's just sitting out in the woods and he's like, I love being a woods rider, especially when the, you know, the, the weather's nice and the dirt's bitching. And that's the way it looked in this, man. They put some really good music to some really good slow motion sections. And it was a great little uh, part for Brad Bakken. Uh, the guy can ride, man. I personally am still disappointed to not see him on a KTM, but that is the way things work out. He is doing a very good job recuperating from his surgery and being on the Yamaha on his two-stroker. And I look forward to see where things go. But don't worry, we've got still more to talk about. So, moving onward. We've got Russell Bobbitt and Corey Buttrick on their two strokes on some wicked ass grass track sections. I don't know where this is at. This might be uh, Russell Bobbitt's place over in Georgia, and maybe one of his friends' places. They do mention that they go someplace later on in the section. But this grass track that those guys are on is freaking epic. You can see every single part of those guys and those motorcycles just working like bosses to get this crap done. They did an amazing job on this section. This is my favorite section, and not just because of the fact that it's got Russell Bob and Corey Buttrick, who are two really cool dudes, fun to hang out with. What makes it my most favorite section is they put, at the very end, they did a little segment that was just two strokes, and they're just the engine noise. No music, no nothing, and it is beautiful. And it's a bunch of killer bees blowing up berms and trails and just making shit happen. It's so awesome. Thank you, Wiley. That was an amazing section. You don't know what you just did to me. So, great section. Go check it out. Uh, the trails that they were riding on was really good. Moving back south into Mexico, and I have absolutely no idea what section this is in Mexico because I didn't know they didn't have anything but sand. But Homero Diaz, who's a guy I'd never heard about until I saw this movie, uh, winds up riding out of his garage down the street doing wheelies up some freaking stairwells and stuff like that and comes into this epic single track absolutely amazing very very rocky super technical uh lush green pine trees i have no idea where this was in mexico but it was a place that it made me want to go ride now granted the horse that came down the trail and shit in front of him was a little interesting <laughs> i don't really know how i would take to that it happens you know what i mean shit happens so there was another little cool part that Homero Diaz uh, had part in. Is he had uh, from the mountain biking scene, you see a lot of wicked wall rides. Well, they had this wicked all-natural wall ride that he did, shot just perfect with the uh, the you know the sunlight coming down uh, behind it. It was the lighting was really good. Wiley again, way to go. And then there's Kurt Caselli's section. You want to talk about absolutely amazing? You can catch me anywhere, and I'll talk about how awesome this section is. Because it's Kurt Caselli, the man, the myth, the bromancer, the Kurt Caselli himself. This section is so freaking fast and so stupid scary, it's ridiculous, man. I don't, I don't know what to say. Okay, so he does a lot of stuff in Baja, a lot of stuff for Mexico, training for this race. This guy just, it's retarded how fast and how smooth and just how, you know, at the same time, awesome he is. He's got all these cool things to say. He's so smooth when he talks to the camera. All those kinds of things. I don't know. It, what else can you say? You know, I might, it might get awkward if I just keep on rambling on about him. So what they did is they brought in some stuff about Ivan Ramirez as well. So that when they were at the San Felipe 250, uh, the, the score 250, they were getting a lot of heli footage for that. And that was something that was really, really cool. Because it was an angle that I'm not used to seeing. They, you know, this money that people are putting into recording these new, these not new, but into getting into these different venues that have been around for forever that we as off-road riders just haven't been able to see is really, really cool, and it's really worth a chance for you guys to check it out and see this kind of stuff. Again, it's not really about the amplitude, but it's about the acknowledgement of these riders, what they're doing, and what they're doing for our scene, and how they're having fun doing it. So, very important. One of the biggest things is that they did a great job with this movie. Remember that you can find it on iTunes, you can get it on Google Play, and you can, oh, you can even buy the DVD if you're looking for you know, some kind of a hard copy of it. I think it's definitely worth a purchase. Support these guys, support the scene, and make sure that off-road riders are getting some money because it does take money to do this stuff. It's not free. I'd like to say thank you for tuning in. I'm not going to lie, we had a lot of fun shooting this, and it's been a lot of fun doing it for you. So hopefully you guys got a kick out of it, you've had some fun, and remember, Always enjoy a pie full of awesome. We're at SeatTime.co. We're on Facebook, Facebook.com slash SeatTime. And on Twitter, where I could maybe tweet what you're not seeing right now. It's uh, SeatTime under, underscore CEO on Twitter. An off 
off-road film. What is? What is Zazuza? What is it? I don't know. An off-road film. What exclamation point s? What is? What is? What's a? What? What is? What's up? Feeling by Wiley Watson. It's an off-road film called What Is? What exclamation point s? What is? The new off-road film. What is? What if? What is now? Off-road film.